Welcome back to the tiny timber frame build. In part one, we cut the joinery on all four corners of the floor sills. Now in part two, we're going to be working on the floor joists. Earlier this week, we took some bigger timbers, put them on the chainsaw mill, and cut them down to size. Sitting here on a seven by seven red pine that is about 16 feet long. We need to cut four three inch by five inch floor joists. So we are gonna throw this up onto the Logosol and break it down. So these, these timbers, I just cut oversized when I was first milling them and that was to get the bark off so that the worms didn't do any more damage than they already have. Stuff has dried out now and so I'm going to use the mill here to kind of break this stuff down into the finished sizes. The joinery is already cut for the four corners. Today we're going to be working on these four floor joists. The outer two are pretty simple. They're just reduced to four inches and drop into a pocket. So here is where we go down to four inches. The center two, however, are a bit different. If you notice, they're missing the top, forming a tenon. This tenon is going to go inside the beam and we're going to drop a peg in from the top. That's going to keep the sills from ever expanding or contracting. It's probably overkill for this purpose. Uh, most timber frames or many timber frames would have an odd number of joists and only the center one would be pegged. But I think this is pretty cool looking joinery. So we're going to go ahead and peg two of them on each side. Let's take a look at the pockets on the sills. The two outer ones are quite simple. All they are is a four inch by two inch housing. The center two are a bit more interesting. They're going to go in a half inch on the top and then we're going to make a two inch mortise. And that two inch mortise is going to go a total of four inches into the beam. That's going to give us enough space up here to drop in a peg and hold that in place. I find it helpful whenever possible to use some type of a saw to define the edges. So because I have access to this lower corner and this upper corner, I can use a handsaw to saw down and define the two edges. With our sidewalls defined, 
we can now take the timber framing chisel and define the rest of our edges. careful that we don't go past this line down here. I'm going to roll the log over and set in our, our lower line. This combination square comes in very handy for checking how square these housings are. I'm not quite two inches deep, so I'm going to just pair off a bit more with the chisel. Very close, very close. We'll call that good. So that's how you cut a housing using your chisel and the handsaw to define the edges. The two outer housings are quite a bit easier because they're just a square hole. These two center ones are going to require a bit more effort. We're going to use our chisel and define our edges and then instead of using the handsaw to cut the edges, we're going to get the uh, forcener bit in the drill so that we can hog out as much waste as possible. You can do it with the chisel but it just takes a lot more effort and the drill will move a lot more material a lot faster and then we'll use the chisel to clean it up. It could be pretty tough to get all the way down four inches into this, this mortise. So one thing that works is to take your drill bit with your Forstner bit and just kind of don't go very deep but just kind of tap along the bottom and you'll end up breaking up enough Dump it out and see how deep we have, how much we have left to go. Look at that, I think we are deep enough. Oh, a little bit to clean up in the corner. On this side we're deep enough, just a little bit more over here. The standard housing is cut on this end, and we have the recessed housing for the tenon here in the center. Now it's just a matter of one, two, three, four, five, six more cuts. There are actually two kinds of measuring that are important in woodworking. The first kind is when you take your primary measurements. So like for these pockets, I measured off of one end and I, I laid out the pockets that way. The second kind of measuring that's important in woodworking is relative measuring. So in this case, I could take my tape measure and lay out the same pockets on this second sill but I know that this sill has to be a mirror image of this one. So instead of using my tape measure, I just am going to put them back to back and I'm just going to trace lines across. I know that these have to line up relatively speaking and it's not as important in terms of exact inches and quarter inches and such. And I'm going to line it up and that's how I'm going to get the marks for this side of pockets. With all the housings cut, for the floor joists. It's time to turn our attention to the joists themselves. Instead of using SketchUp to take a measurement, we're going to lay these floor sills right on the ground and then set the joists in place and use a pencil to take an exact mark. We will work on the two outer floor joists first. The height of these is currently set to 5 inches and if you recall the housing is only 4 inches. The reason for this difference is so that out in the middle of the floor joist it can remain rigid and over here on the sill we still have enough material to support the joist. So we've cut these outer joists to length and when we set them in place we can see that we still have this inch of material to deal with. 
So I'm going to take my pencil and put a mark in here, mark over here and here, and we're going to take and cut this off so that we can lower the joist all the way in flush with the sill. With the two outer floor joists cut and fit, now it's time to turn our attention to the center two. The center two have a bit more joinery to work on. Again, the reason that we have this full ten in here is so that we can drive a pin in through the top and secure the, the outer sills from moving out. Anytime we're laying out joinery, we want to pick our reference face. So on this floor joist, I'm going to use this top section here, and that's going to be the reference face for all of the joinery on each end. So the first thing we'll do is we'll reduce the overall height to four inches. We're going to use the skill saw cut in through here on each side, only coming right up here to the four inch mark, and then we'll hand saw the rest and knock this section out. This is a spot that if you were, um, if you had a second level and you could see the bottom of these, this is a spot that you'd want to use um, a spoke shave or something to make this nice and smooth transition. For our purposes, it's going to be below the shed, so we are just going to make sure that this section here is not going to restrict the tenon from going into uh, the sill. Our tenon is now four inches long and we need, just need to knock out the top section here, which is only three and a half inches because we have that half inch housing on the sill. So we'll use our skill saw, cut on each side, and then maybe hand saw or skill saw across the top. Our SketchUp plan shows these inner joists being 68 inches long, but instead of completely trusting that, I like to lay things out here and take our measurement uh, based on the actual finished dimension. So I'm going to stick the tape measure into the bottom of the tenon and I'm going to come all the way down here and we are like 64 and an eighth. So our, our tenon housing is four inches deep so that is pretty close to the 68 that we need. Instead of cutting to our finished length right away, I like to cut one joint first and that's because if I mess up on this joint then I can chop it off and I still have some room to work. But this joint is ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead now and measure our 68 inches. When we were cutting the mortises for the sills, we used the skinnier end of our, of our framing square as a reference um, to fit inside. So the nice thing here is that this is a 2 inch. So our tenons for the, the center joists need to have a housing that fits our square in like this. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to make sure that these housings are sized properly and then cut the remaining uh, tenons on the joists. That is all of the joinery for the floor. We have our through tenons, mortise and tenon on the ends for the sills. We have a recessed pocket here for the two outer floor joists, and we have a mortise and tenon, I don't know what you call this, if it's like a, like a mortise and tenon pocket, I'm not sure what it is, but this has, these two center ones have the, the tenon on it, that will go into the housing, and we're going to drill some pegs down through there. So that's all we're going to do now on the floor. Um, I'm going to set this aside, and we are going to start working on the corner post next. However. Wisconsin winter has shown up. Yes, it is October. We're supposed to get a bunch of snow tonight. So I'm going to have to wait a little bit till the snow melts so that we can get out to the sawmill to cut up the rest of the pieces that we need. But until then, we'll see you later.